What a great crowd here tonight for this AAA game. Both teams well supported. In addition to that, we've got hundreds of people here just to watch these fine players play. Two good traditional programs as well. The Tomcats of Haywood have been frequent visitors to the sub-state and state action. In fact, finishing runner-up on two occasions in 74 and 78. And of course, when you talk tradition in East Tennessee, you gotta say Dobbins Bennett. Absolutely. Coach Buck Van Hus for a number of years with a great tradition there. And after his untimely passing, Coach Steve Shipley has followed up in a very fine way with that tradition. And Dobbins Bennett gets the opening tip as Hale wins the toss. They get it in the middle. Free throw line jumper is no good, and Hines comes out of there with a the rebound. The University of Tennessee football signee. Penetrating all the way down that time was number 33, Derek Singleton. There's a steal. Delk gets it and scores. It's 4 to nothing. Haywood. Here comes the full court zone pressure. And there's another steal. Delk again for two more. Dobbins Bennett wants a timeout. It's 6 to nothing. 44 seconds have elapsed. Haywood County is 3 for 3. And the crowd is really into this one early. The pressure defense having its toe right now. Haywood County out quick. Two turnovers in the first 45 seconds, and that's the kind of pace they want. But you know, Dobbs Bennett, Dobbs Bennett is a team that likes the transition game. If they can find a way to solve this press, look for them to score quickly. You wonder about calling a timeout with uh, less than a minute elapsed in the game. But uh, as I pointed out, the crowd has really gotten into this one early. And this could be a, a situation where you don't want to get down too much too soon. A note of caution here for Haywood County. I'm sure that they were reminded of this. Let's don't get complacent. And a lot of times after a timeout, you get a little bit satisfied. You've come out quick, but they cannot let up. Now Dobbins Bennett puts it in play with a little bit different strategy. They've been trying to get it to the middle of the court against this press. This time they come up the side and trap there as Delk dunks. Eight to nothing. Great pass by Tyrone Hines. The big man handles the ball well. There's Dobbins Bennett back the other way. And just like you pointed out, if they break the press, then they've got a chance at... Uh, Lighten it up on the other end. It's 8-2 to two early, and Dobbins Bennett's still in this one as Haywood tried for the home run ball, and it was thrown over the head there of the Tomcat uh, player. Delk made just a, a long pass that was a little bit too long. That time he turned it over, again trying to make a, a, about a 50-foot pass. The quickness we talked about in the opening, you're seeing it here early. Haywood County is extremely quick. Corum. Todd Corum comes into the game for Dobbins Bennett. I was fixing to say that this defense sets their suits their personnel perfectly. It's able to exploit their quickness. And there's Dobbins Bennett back the other way again with Ryan Black. He's got all four of there's a steal for Hayden. And there's Corum Bennett. Bucket. Got the steal and got the bucket, and it's 8-6. to six. And there's another near steal. Pressure still on, and Corum comes out with it. Singleton picks up the foul. He was the one who had the ball stolen from him by Corum, and then Corum was fouled by Singleton. And we've seen Kingsport reverse the tables with their own pressure defense, create some turnovers and get some baskets in transition. Into the game for Haywood comes number 30, Joe Cooper. Good pass down low and good catch that time. Jamichael Mills. On the low post, scores to tie this game at eight with five minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first period. Delk for three. 
Got it. Nine points for Tony Delk here early going. He was a good two, maybe three strides past the three-point line. There's Hale with a rebound, but it was stripped from him, and Delk and Mills are out on the break. Correction, Harwell. Harwell was a little bit out of control there. And he charged into the Dobbins Bennett Indian who was under the basket. Haywood leads 11 to eight. Dell cast nine of those 11, including one three. Good job that time by Matt Piazza. Stayed under control. What about the shooting of these teams the first few minutes here? Haywood County, 5-5, five five, Kingsport Dobbs Bennett, 4-6. Five, 5-7, five of five of seven, excuse me. Harwell looking inside. Recovered that time by Tony Delk, who was right in the right spot at the right time, and he got two more. It's 13-10. Hines with the rebound on the missed shot. Good box out work that time Back by Tyler the other Hines. Way is Thought about three. Instead, got it inside to the flashing Shaw, who scored to make it 15 to 10. All the way to the bucket. Back the other way is Piazza. Missed the layup. Now they get it out to Dell. There's another three. <laughs> got it. Whistling on the rebound. Haywood knocked it out of bounds. The Tomcats from Brownsville are really lighting it up here early. Eight of eight. Into the game, number 42, Fred Smith for Dobbins Bennett. Also comes number 24, DeMar Lewis. Corum thought about the three, wouldn't take it. Now he gets it back, thought about it again. There's a pass to the high post, shot is off, no good. Good offensive board work that time by Jamichael Mills, who got his second bucket. Jamichael's average 11 points in the year. He's does a very good job for this team in his post position. Three and a half minutes to go in the period. Haywood leads 18 to 12. Delk wants to deal. Now the double and the triple team comes. He dishes it off to Cooper, who scored from the baseline. It's 20 to 12. Corum is stripped. Dell comes up with it and scores. 10 to 10, 16 in the quarter for Dell. 22 to 12. Good transition play that time by Dobbins Bennett, able to stay under control was DeMar Lewis. He cut down the middle and got the pass, stopped in the paint. Some of the Haywood fans wanted to travel, but he kept that pivot foot still. Shaw picked up the foul for Haywood. As Lewis went to shoot, he'll go to the line to shoot two. We've already seen from Kingsport the depth we talk, they talked about. They, they've gone several players deep here, and that might be a factor in this quick-paced game. They've already played eight players in the game. Haywood has countered with six, and Lewis gets the first of two free throws. The lead is nine for Haywood. The second is up and good, 22 to 14. Shaw looking for someone and now gets it to Cooper. Crosses the timeline. They get it over to Singleton. He wants to work one-on-one -on -one against this man-to-man -man defense. Penetrates, stops, almost threw it away. And finally over there, Cooper stepped on the sideline. One of the few times tonight we've seen a half-court offense run. Most of, the, most of the points have come through fast breaks and off the press. 
And that time Piazza was looking for, I believe looking for Fred Smith to streak up the left sideline over there in front of the Haywood bench. He faked and cut back toward the ball, but the ball was already in the air, and so the turnover goes to Haywood with 2.22 to go in the period. Great pass that time by Tony Dell. Get Thomas Shaw on the baseline. And when Dell hasn't scored it, he's fed it, hasn't he? Well, that time they came up to double him, and you don't blame him for doing that, but then he finds the open man. Into the game for Haywood. For 35, Jason Chapman. He's a 6'3 sophomore. Thomas Shaw is on the line. On the rebound, it's a jump ball. It'll be Haywood's basketball. 24-14, Haywood leads with 2.15 to go in the first quarter. There's a three on the way. Off no good. He's human. That's the first miss by the team here in the first six minutes of the game. Ryan Black comes back. For the Indians. Delk picks up the foul there as the backcourt pressure was applied. DeMar Lewis tried to get around him. Delk couldn't get there, and so the foul is called on Delk. Good play that time by Shaw. They were looking for the lob inside to Hale, but Shaw got up and deflected it, and Cooper came out of there with it. There's Shaw on the baseline. Chapman couldn't handle that pass in the corner, so the ball goes out of bounds to the Indians. Good half-court defense that time by Kingsport. A lot of pressure on the ball. Never really gave Haywood County a chance to set up and look at the basket. That time Black took the shot, tried to go for the offensive rebound, but came over the back. Black's first. Again, a long pass. Couldn't quite be run down in the corner, so it goes out of bounds to Dobbins Bennett. Good job that time of breaking the press. Hale finally got the rebound. There's Piazza for three. Got it. It's always 24 to 17. Give Hill credit for the pass that time, going back outside and, and finding the wide open three-pointer for Matt. Shaw with a jumper off, no good. And now we got a three-on-one, make it a four-on-one. There's Hale, layup, no good. And out of there with it was Chapman. Baseline jumper by Delk was good. 26-17, long pass to Hale. And as he put it on the floor, he traveled. 32.4 seconds, Haywood leads 26-17. At this pace, they're, they could get off four or five more shots <laughs> in this 32.4 seconds. Look like they may, no, I started to say they may try to work for one shot, but they don't. They turn it over, now they get it back, and now they get it back up to Piazza. And as he went up for the shot, he was fouled by Joe Cooper. That could have been called on the floor. I don't know if he was in the act of shooting or not. There are 14.3 seconds to go in the period. He was judged as in the act of shooting. 
I like what Matt did that time. He went ahead and took the basket, took the ball to the basket, and, and knew he was either going to score or draw the foul. And that kind of aggressive play is what they're going to need once they break the press. You can't be just content with breaking the press. You need to go to the hoop and try to get some points out of it. Into the game for Haywood came Kendall Dancy as Piazza gets the first free throw. Has six points in the game, leads his team here in the first quarter. Make it seven, 26 to 19. A seven point advantage for Haywood. There's a turnover just off the inbounds play. Shot up and good by Ryan Black, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. No shot attempt, no shot. Good defensive job by Dobbins Bennett right there. The last uh, 4.5 seconds, they got the turnover and then coming back the other way, kept Haywood from getting a look at the basket. And they've cut the lead to 26-21 at the end of one quarter. What a pace, the first quarter. And again, we talked about the depth of Kingsport. Uh, in this back and forth game, that's poss a possible uh, factor later on. In a, a first appearance of a team in a given state tournament, uh, uh, a lot of emotion is expent, uh, or ex uh, ex expended in the first quarter. And it'll be interesting to see if this pace continues. You would think that it would, at least to a certain extent, because both teams like to play the up-tempo game, like to press, like to create the transition game. But usually, the excitement wears off just a little bit, and the nerves calm down, and you settle into uh, more of the kind of game that you're going to see. Uh, typically, the first quarter pace, which at this point is we're on the pace for a 100-point game or so, uh, typically that slows down a little bit in the next two or three quarters. Remember that Haywood County had got off to a 6-0 start with, with the press that they threw on Kingsport, and now, uh, since that point, we've been even. In fact, Kingsport's won the rest of the quarter, 21-20. to just some fantastic shooting, too, by Haywood County. 11 of 14. I believe they hit their first 10 straight. Two of the three from the three-point line. Dobbs, Dobbs Bennett has shot the ball well. Eight of 17. And I, I think your point about the style of play is a good point. Uh, this, this could be what we see for, for four quarters tonight. There's a lob. A little bit too strong. A little bit too long for Ryan Black. But it was a good idea, and the play was completely open. Well, it was a, gr a great play by the bench because they came out after the, after the uh, quarter break and went right to that play. A great call that time by Coach Shipley. Dancy turned it over there with a little pressure from Dobbins Bennett. And so they'll get another possession here in the beginning of the second quarter. Good pass down low on the baseline to Jamichael Mills and the left-handed jumper from about four feet out is good. We're Looking at a 26-23 game. Another golden opportunity that time by Dobbins Bennett, and they turned it over. Couldn't quite handle it. Returning for Haywood, number 23, Grover Harwell. He's a 6'1 senior guard. There's another turnover created by the pressure defense. What they've done with their pressure defense is effectively took the ball out of Tony Delk's hands. Unless they can get the ball up court, he's not going to be the factor that he was here early in this game. Hale with the offensive board work. Got it to go. That's Hale's first two of the game. But he's been a big factor in this game. Even though he hasn't scored, he's made some good passes inside. Done a real good job on the boards. There's Hines way off the mark from the baseline. No good. Dobbins Bennett wants to run now. Uh, look inside the hail. Couldn't get it. Actually, Corum never really got good control of that ball to make that pass. It was a good idea on a good look inside, but he never really was under control. So Piazza returns. Also Shane Carnes returns. And coming back in is DeMar Lewis for Dobbins Bennett. There's a double team on Delk and now a triple team. 
they don't attack. They had the numbers, but now they do. Derek Singleton scores from the baseline. 28-25, the lead had been cut to one. We're at the 6-15 mark of the first half. Hale, no good, a little long. Whistle in good position on the inside that time for, I believe it was Hines who had good position on the inside. Ryan Black came over the back, and that's his second foul. He's the only Indian with any sort of foul trouble. Now he's being substituted for. Jamichael Mills, who started the game, comes back in. And Black and Mills are, are two good young players. Black is a junior, Mills a sophomore. And there's a steal by another sophomore, Shane Carnes, ahead to Hale, and he ducks her home. I believe the score is 28-27. That time a little bit of a force. The offensive foul is called on Hines. That's his first. One thing that's happening with Brownsville on the pass, if Tony Delk handles the ball, they're breaking the press. But then that takes him out of the situation where he has the ball to score. So uh, right now, the, the pressure of Kingsport's working in, in that it's, it's disrupting the game that Haywood County wants to run. Carnes has it in the front court. Wants to penetrate. Nice Good pass. pass to Hale. And Delk blocked it. Hines is in the right spot at the right time and got the layup. The pass had actually gone through the hands of Shaw, but right there for it was Hines, and he put it in for a 30 to 27 lead with five minutes to go in the first half. Delk with his second block in a row. Blocked that shot attempt by Carnes. So now he brings it up for the Tomcats. Finds a wide open teammate. Harwell, his shot was off no good. Ball is knocked out of bounds by Haywood. It'll be Dobbins Bennett's ball. Coming in for Haywood. Number 30, Joe Cooper. Corum gets it to Biazza and they run the offense. Gets this man-to-man -man pressure. Corum thought about penetrating, can't, now he does. Kicks it out into the corner for a three-point attempt off, no good. Good looking shot there that time by DeMar Lewis, it just wouldn't go. Delk pulls up for the three, off, no good. And Corum out of there with it. Got the numbers, three on one, now three on two from three-point land. That time Lewis got it, almost the same spot. And we're tied at 30 with 4.04 to go in the first half. Great comeback, keep of the defense for Diamonds Bennett. Coming back in for the Indians, number 42, Fred Smith. With their defense, again, they're, they're effectively keeping the ball out of Tony Delk's hands in scoring position. He's, the last possession took a three-pointer that he was still doubled up on. That time he penetrated all the way to the bucket, left hand, got the roll. 32-30, he has a tremendous first step. Long pass to Corum. Too far under, and there's going to be a goaltending call. Harwell hit the ball while it was above the rim. To be quite honest with you, I thought Cora was too far under to get that ball to, to go with the uh, off the left hand. And there's a steal by Harwell. All the way under is Smith for the bucket. Good. And Dobbins Bennett takes a two-point lead with 3.28 to go in the first half. 
34-32. Now Haywood breaks the pressure and they've got the numbers. They set it up instead. There's Harwell with it. All the way down to the baseline, shot is up. No good, but he charged. Harwell picks up the personal foul. Another good example there of Kingsport's defense sliding back and taking the charge. The second foul on Harwell. Carnes and Mills, the sophomores for Dobbins Bennett, return to the lineup. And I like the way Coach Shipley has kept the players fresh here in the first half of action. He's made frequent substitutions of these eight players and has kept his uh, team fresh and really allowed them to take control of this game at this point. Haywood has also used their bench well, having played not only their starting five, but also Joe Cooper, Kendall Dancy, and Jason Chapman. All the way to the bucket. Good by Todd Corum. He's a six-foot junior. There's an example of their bench coming through from him. Todd has six points here in the first half. Shaw now gets it to Hines, and coming over to help out was Jamichael Mills. And he kicked it out of bounds. Derek Singleton, who started the game, comes back for Haywood. Cooper takes a rest. One of the things that's happened is Kingsport is outshot Haywood County 12 to 6 here in the quarter, and you've got to attribute that to the defense. Uh, Haywood County's not getting good looks at the basket. There's, There's another example. By Carnes, gives it up, and a shot is missed by Mills. And on the rebound, I believe Fred Smith fouled. It was on Fred, and it is his second foul. 2.37 to go in the first half. 36-32. We've probably not mentioned the time and score <laughs> very frequently here because we could hardly keep up with it ourselves. There's another steal by Mills. Good pump fake that time. Good job of Fred Smith that time of staying under control. That time, DeMar Lewis reached in and fouled. Attempted to make a big play and a steal. I believe Coach Rick Sullivan for Haywood wants a timeout. He does, and the Tomcats do take their first time out of the game with 2.18 to go in the first half. Dobbins Bennett leads 36-34. Correction on the score, it's now 38-32 Dobbins Bennett leads, and uh, apparently a basket had been taken from Dobbins Bennett and given to Haywood on the score at least, and uh, we have it corrected now officially. Haywood County was ahead 32-30. An 8-0 run here by Dobbins Bennett. Dobbins Bennett is what it keyed this time out by Coach Sullivan. They're just not doing a good job right now of getting the ball into Tony Delk's hands, and he's spending so much energy bringing the ball off the court that he's not in a, in a position to spot up on the three-point line. And they got to find a way to, to help him get the ball off the court. They want to get the ball off the court without having to use him so he can be more effective in their offense. Haywood will throw the ball in under the Dobbins-Bennett basket after the foul. Hale returns for Dobbins Bennett. He'd been on the bench for a few moments. Harwell now breaks the press. Nearly loses the ball. Finally does as he turned it over on the double dribble. You can see there in your picture that one of the Dobbins Bennett assistants there holds up a card to call the offense. And that's a very effective means of communication in a large crowd that's very boisterous. Good follow that time by Lewis after the three-point attempt by Carnes was missed. And Dobbins Bennett now leads by eight, 40 to 32. There's Delk, wants to deal. 
Now does to Shaw on the baseline who missed the dunk. Hale got the rebound. Now Lewis pulls it back out, gets it to Carnes. We've talked about the bench of Kingsport here. They have 17 points in the first half. That's the contribution they've made, a tremendous contribution to this, uh, to their team's 40 points. David Smith is going to run a spread offense here, try to work off the last minute and 15 seconds of the first half, and then get a good look at the basket. Haywood will look to trap. They almost got the trap there on Carnes. Now he dribbles out of it and gets it to Piazza. Piazza penetrates all the way down to Hale. Baseline jumper good with one minute to go in the first half. It's a 10-point Dobbins Bennett lead. It's just the early outburst from Delft. They've just taken him right out of the game. There's Hines down low. Wanted the foul, didn't get it. Instead, Dobbins Bennett is back the other way. There's Piazza. Good from 17. 44-32. There's Hines struggling for the recovery. Finally comes up with it. Gets it to Delk, who's set for the three. No good. Hines with a rebound. Shot up good. That ends up pretty long dry spell for Haywood. Pulls it back to within 10 at 34-44 with 15 seconds to go. The run was at 14. That broke the 14-0 run. Piazza was bringing it up court. Number 33, Derek Singleton, reached in and fouled him. At Singleton's second. He joins Grover Harwell with two for Haywood. Ryan Black and Fred Smith have two for Dobbins Bennett. Jamichael Mills came back in at that break for Lewis. Piazza's shot is up and good. 12.9 seconds remain in the first half, 45-34. Also, Fred Smith comes back in for Carnes. Fred does have two fouls. Piazza's second toss is short. Battle for the rebound is won by Dobbins Bennett. Ten seconds. Get it on the baseline. No good. Hale tried the tip. Couldn't get it. Now they have five seconds. Ahead to Delp. Three seconds. Went up to shoot and scored with one second. And at the end of the first half, Kingsport Dobbins Bennett, 45, Haywood County, 36. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's a medical doctor here, we need you immediately in Section F, near the top level. A medical doctor to Section F immediately, please, near the top level, Section F. have the first possession of the second half. Haywood in their man-to-man -man defense. Good pick out there by Hale. Piazza's free. Can't get the shot. And the ball goes out of bounds off of Dobbins Bennett. Haywood basketball. Just underway here in the second half. time Delk was looking for the return feed and that was what you might call an unforced error if we were using tennis lingo there. Uh, uh, Delk just didn't do the fundamental thing right there looking the pass into his hands. The strength of Haywood County in the first quarter was their press and the ability to create the turnover but from that point on they haven't been able to make enough baskets to set up their press and that's been a big key. Haywood County in a man-to-man -man defense. Still, neither team has scored here in the second half. Yeah, but at this point in the first half, we'd already had a timeout. It was a 6-0 run, so this has been a slow pace for these teams. Delp threw the foul there as he penetrated and took it all the way down low to the basket. I believe that foul's on Jamichael Mills. That's his first. 
Delk will make his first trip to the line tonight, and he's a little long. Still no score here in the second half. 45-36, Dobbins Bennett still leads. Piazza for three, got it. He has 14 in the game. Baseline jumper is good from Grover Harwell. Now Piazza wants to run after breaking the press. Got it all the way up to Ryan Black and he took it all the way to the hole. Not able to get there in time and cut him off was Thomas Shaw. Instead he draws the foul. I believe the basket's gonna count. It does. And Black will go to the line to complete the three point play. 50 to 38, Dobbins Bennett leads 6.32 to go in the third quarter. Shot is good, it's 51-38. Here comes that pressure from Dobbins Bennett. Baseline to Hines, layup no good, got his own rebound, put it back up and scored. Now they've got a three on two coming back the other way. Set for the three was Carnes, he missed it. There for the follow was Jamichael Mills. And there's a turnover from Haywood, 53-40. Checking into the game for Haywood is Joe Cooper. Got it on the post to Hale, his jumper was no good and Hines with the rebound, but then he turned it over. Delk blocked that shot. He sat back and waited on Carnes. When Carnes shot it, he leaped and blocked it. But Dobbins Bennett will retain possession under their own basket. There's Hale off balance, shot no good. Hines with it out to Delk and they want to run. It's a two on two. Delk thought about pulling up for the three. Instead Piazza couldn't get there to cut off Shaw. He blocked. Coming in to block the shot was either Hale or Mills. I couldn't tell who. Knocked it away, but going to the line for two will be Thomas Shaw. Piazza's first foul. Charles free throw is just short, no good. Haywood County's gonna need to take advantage of the opportunities at the free throw line. They're over three here early in the, the third quarter. Make it 0 4. 53 40. 5 30 to go in the third period. Dobbins Bennett leads by 13. In a situation where their shots aren't coming very frequently and very easily, they do need to take advantage of the situations like that. In a four low offensive set that time, Piazza worked one on one back then, took the turnaround jumper and got the roll. It's 55 to 40. Matt's had a big game tonight. He's doubled his average on the year. Super four game also. There's a steal by Carnes. He took it all the way in and scored. And he was fouled. I believe Cooper will pick up the foul. wants a timeout and they get it with 5.05 to go in the third period. Dobbins Bennett now leads 57 to 40. Bill, now the timeout that Coach Steve Shipley took after the six to nothing start by Haywood looks mighty good because uh, you pointed out sometimes a timeout will just take some of the steam 
out of a team that uh, has gotten off to a good roll. And while Haywood was able to maintain a lead there for a while, since that point, it sort of uh, uh, shook Diamonds Bennett back into this game, and they've played tremendously well, especially from midway of the first quarter on. Well, they're a tremendous team, a lot of talent, and we, we don't want to overuse the depth, but they put five great players on the floor, and defensively, they're, they're, they're great. They're just great team defense. They've really gotten after it. And I don't know so much if it was the fact that Haywood County let down as much as it was that Kingsport Dodgers Bennett had a chance to look at what they were doing and settled down. And they got into their, to their game. They've been ranked number one all year in the state, or most of the year in the state. And you see why. They're just a good team. So far in this third quarter, 5 of 11 for Dobbins Bennett. They shot the ball well. And again, Haywood County is shooting the great percent, but they're not getting any shots out there. Two or three here in the quarter, but they've been outshot eight times. They're also 0 of 4 from the foul line. Now Carnes completes the three-point play. They lead 58 to 40, and there's another steal. Carnes gets it to Piazza, who's set up for the three. Couldn't get it to go. Hale with the tip. No good. Tip once, then twice by Black, and finally got it down. It's a 20-point advantage for Dobbins Bennett, 60 to 40. And again, they forced Tony Dell to bring the ball off the court, make him give it up, and now they're not going to try to let him have it back. There's that trapping defense, scrambling defense. Delk hangs, shoots. He was fouled. Ryan Black picked up the foul, his third foul. Delk will go to the line to shoot two. 4.35 into the game for Kingsport comes Fred Smith. Also coming back in for his first action of the second half is Todd Corum for Kingsport Dobbins Bennett. They all got that free throw, and that's the first free throw they've been able to hit in the second half. And that ends a 9-0 run by Kingsport in the third quarter. Got the second. Still an 18-point advantage for Dobbins Bennett. They break the press. And now look to attack, the pass is down low to Corum. Beautiful 40-foot bounce pass that time to the streaking Corum, who got the layup good. It's 62-42. Good pass to Hines, his shot gets the roll, and it's good, 62-44. Good job that time by Derek Singleton. He was falling down as he got the rebound. Great presence of mind. Kicked it out and saved possession of it for his team. Hines penetrates in the paint, puts it up with strength and determination. It's no good, but he was fouled on the play. Ricardo Hale picked up the foul. That's his first of the game. And so Hines will go to the line with 3.52 to go in the third quarter, looking to cut further into this 18-point advantage. DeMar Lewis comes into the game for Dobbins Bennett, and also Shane Carnes returns. Hines to shoot two. First one is long. Relatively poor free throw shooting here in the second half continues for Haywood. I believe unofficially they're two of seven. Make it two of eight. Now the Indians set their offense. Carnes all the way to the hoop. Shot no good. Battle for the rebound is won by Joe Cooper. Cooper gets it to Delk. Delk wants to pull up. Pops. Rocks. 62-47, and it's a 15-point lead. That time, as Hale tried for the offensive rebound, 
Cooper had good position inside. Hale came over his back and is called for the foul. And after the 62-42 lead is whittled down to 62-47, a little five-point run here by Haywood. Coach Steve Shipley of Dobbins Bennett wants to ask for timeout. Tremendous crowd here tonight. Been going back and forth between the two contingents. And a lot of people came here, to be honest, to see Tony Delk. He's a great player, and he's lived up to the, those expectations tonight, scoring 27 points. He's got great range on his three-point shot, and I think that's one of the things that Coach Shipley's going to talk about here is the fact that Delk is good enough by himself to get them back in it. We've got to shut the three-point shot off. We've got to make him pluck. We've got to stop him, and let's take our chances on the rest of his teammates. In the quarter, Haywood County, four of five shooting. Continues to be excellent. Kingsport Dobbins Bennett, seven of 18. And again, that illustrates the fact that they have been able, out of their defense, to create more shot opportunities. Seven of 18 is by no means poor when you factor in some of the three-point attempts by Dobbins Bennett. And then when you consider that they are getting more looks at the basket with not only the defensive uh, intensity to creating turnovers, but also the good offensive board work, then uh, that adds up to this 15-point Dobbins Bennett lead. Delk gave it up, now can't get it back. Good pass down low. I, was it Hines? I believe it was Hines who missed the first, but there for the follow was Shaw. 62-49. Here comes that Haywood pressure they're trying to trap whenever they get an opportunity. Good job that time of sealing off down on the post by DeMar Lewis, who spun in the lane and got the shot to go. And that ended a seven to nothing run by Dobbin, or rather by Haywood. Good follow that time by Hines, and as he put it back up and through, he was fouled. I believe the basket will count. It will, and the foul will be on, I believe it's Corum. It was on Corum, it is his first. Piazza returns for Dobbins Bennett. Also coming back in is Ryan Black for the Indians. Tyrone Hines has 10 points in the game, second player for, for Haywood County to get in double figures. And again, another opportunity at the line. That shot is long. Lewis comes away with the rebound and gets it to Piazza, who's done a great job handling the team tonight Tremendous. for the point. He's not only handled the team, but also given him a great deal of offense as well. Well, he's doubled his average. He's at 15 for the night, averages seven on the year. Jamichael Mills forced it up just a little bit there, but as he leaned in, he was fouled by Delk, so he'll go to the line to shoot two. Haywood will be in the one and one for the rest of the game. That's the third team foul on Haywood, so it'll be a while before the Indians of Dobbins Bennett will take advantage of the bonus opportunity. 2.04 to go in the third. Dobbins Bennett leads 64-51. They miss an opportunity here to um, extend that lead with the clock stop. Mills misses two. So Haywood runs their offense, which is Delk pulling up for three. Got it. What a pure shooter. He's great. 64-54. <laughs> that was two men in his face, and he went up very easily and made that. But look at Piazza coming back the other way. It wasn't a 20-footer, but it was about a 12-footer, and it counts for two, giving his team a 12-point lead. Dobbins Bennett had the trap there. And I believe Carnes reached in and fouled Cooper. So Cooper should go to the line to shoot one and one. Coming back in for Dobbins Bennett. Number 42, Fred Smith. Also Hale returns. Also out there for them are DeMar Lewis, 
Shane Carnes and Piazza. Haywood has Jason Chapman in the game now. And they miss the first of the one and one, but they get the rebound. Delk has it now. Look for him to light it up. He dishes it instead to Chapman on the baseline. Jumper no good. And Dobbins Bendit comes away with the rebound. Lewis has it. That time as Delk went up, someone knocked the ball free, and instead of forcing the shot, he passed it down. They got a pretty good shot out of it, but just couldn't get it to go. Good example of his jumping ability. To, most people couldn't adjust like, like that the ball's been hit, but with his ability to hang, he was able to do that. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Dobbins Bennett running down the clock, 66-54. They lead. They look like running this stall offense or delay game with four players aligned along the baseline, or rather along the lane. There's Delk with a steal. He'll take it all the way home for the dunk. 66-56. I started to say it looks like Dobbins has been at running this delay. It has five interchangeable parts. They have five men that can handle the basketball fairly well. Pass down low to Hale, and he got the bucket. 15 seconds to go, 68-56. There's the trap, and it was knocked out of bounds off of Dobbins Bennett. Nine seconds to go in the third period, a 12-point Indian lead, 68-56. Nearly a steal, and now there is one. Now it is Chapman with the ball for Haywood, one second. Hines wanted to shoot it at the buzzer, but couldn't. So at the end of three periods of play, Dobbins Bennett clings to a 68-56 lead over the Haywood Tomcats. Nice job that time by Haywood County. They were down by 20, 60 to 40, and they've made a run to get, the down, get it down to 12, and even had a chance to get it down to 10 or less. So they made a move to get back in it. We've already seen what Tony Delk can do. A 12-point deficit is only four shots for him, so uh, I don't think any lead safe with this Haywood County Tomcat ball club. Kind of bring you up to, to date on some statistics. Uh, first for Kingsport Dobbs Bennett, uh, Matt Pia Piazza leads the team with 17 points, Ryan Black with 11, DeMar uh, Lewis with 9, Todd Corum 8, Jamichael Mills 8, Ricardo Hale 8. Again, a lot of balance there. For Haywood County, Tony Delk with 32, and Tyrone Hines with 10. The fourth quarter is going to be very important for Haywood County to take advantage of the free throw at the free throw line. We've seen in the third quarter where they really struggled there, and they need to do that with the clock stopped. The clock is going to become a factor in this ball game. Unless we go to overtime. There are only eight minutes remaining for one of these two teams who will advance to the final four. Class AAA basketball for 1992. We'll decide it here down the stretch. Hines with the fadeaway spinning shot, falling down, got it to go, and the lead is 10 once again for Dobbins Bennett, 68-58. They've got it down to 10 on two or three different occasions, Bill. What about getting over that hump of getting inside of 10? They left Piazza wide open, but he missed the three. Psychological advantage. It really does work for your players if you can get that lead in single digits. There's Hines with a chance. No good, and Hale tipped it out, and Mills recovered it. Nine seems so much closer than ten. Pass in the post to Hale. Shot is off, no good. Got his own rebound. Puts it up from the baseline again, no good. Struggle for the loose ball is now won by Thomas Shaw of Haywood County. They get it to Dell. Seven minutes to go in the game. You can almost feel the crowd come alive when Dell gets the basketball. That time he was triple team. Carnes took it and went all the way down and missed the shot. But there for the follow was Ryan Black. And I believe Carnes may have twisted an ankle. The official stops play to get him over to the bench so the training staff can look at him. And Corum will return for the injured Carnes. Hopefully Carnes is not too seriously hurt. He's a fine sophomore uh, wing and guard player.
6.35 to go. That's a Haywood turnover. The Diamonds Bennett lead is 12, 70 to 58. Harwell comes back in for Haywood. Dobbins Bennett gets it into Piazza. Six and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. There's Corum. He thought about the three for a moment, but then he backs up and sets the offense again. As he anticipated Hale coming to the corner, the timing was off just a little bit, and Corum took an extra step, turned it over. Now Haywood comes back with Delk. Setting a pick for him, and I believe Hines ran over Piazza. Didn't quite get set before Matt got there, and he actually pushed Matt. He's called for the foul. That's Hines' second foul. Black gets it into Mills. Mills back to Black. Try to work it to Matt Piazza and they get it to him now. It's important now for Haywood County to take advantage of this possession. They're, the clock with 549. They need to go ahead and make a move now. There's not going to be many more possessions in this game that they don't need to waste anymore. Well, very often you think about the three, and you think, well, this is only four possessions. They cut the lead back again to 10. This is only four possessions. But realistically, with some teams, you, you don't think that that's the case because uh, you know it's going to take uh, tremendous three-point shooting to do that. But with Haywood and Delk, it's very likely that that's the case. He can light it up. Good ball handling that time by Piazza. Took it all the way to the bucket and scored. 72-60. Every time they make a run, somebody from Dobbins Bennett answers. There's Delk with a three off, no good. Rebound by Hines. Fakes once and twice and then goes up with it and scores. 72-62 at the five minute mark of the basketball game. Corum working against the man-to-man -man pressure. Baseline for Mills, 74-62. Good shot that time by Grover Harwell, who took it all the way to the bucket and scored to bring it back to a 10-point game again. Corum all the way in for the bucket. And he took a spill there and might be hurt a little bit. He's rolling around on the floor. Now the official runs to assist him. I believe he's gonna be okay. Todd becomes the fourth inning to reach double figures. He now has 10 points in his reserve role. Really giving him a big lift tonight. He averages 5.4 in the year, and, and as I pointed out, he's done a great job coming in along with uh, Lewis and Smith. Fred Smith and DeMar Lewis are back in the game for Dobbins Bennett. Harwell wants to shoot, does. Hines there for the rebound and scored with it to again bring it back to a 10 point game, 76 66. They've done a good job in their offense scoring, but they've got to stop Kingsport at some point. Well, they didn't do it that time as Corum was set up beautifully for the three. They got the ball to him and he got it down, 79-66. And in the backcourt, Harwell travels. 3.36 to go in the basketball game.
as Corum again thought about the three, now pulls in from about 15 and got it to go. 79-60, rather 81-66. Corum has come up big here, scoring seven straight points for Dobbins Bennett to extend this margin to 15 points. Delk steps back a step or two, takes the three, battle for the rebound. Shot is blocked there by Hale. They've got a run out three on one all the way for Piazza. He goes up for the shot. It was blocked by Derek Singleton, but he fouled Piazza to do so. Into the game for Haywood. Number 35, Jason Chapman. And also number 30, Joe Cooper. 2.59 to go in the game. Piazza will be at the line. Dobbins Bennett leads by 15. Piazza misses. The second one is off no good, and Shaw comes away with a rebound. They get it to Harwell. Harwell all the way in. I believe that was a pass intended for Delk, and it banked off the glass, and Delk got it and scored 81-68. 13-point lead for the Indians. 2.42 to go. Running their basic flex or motion offense there. That time Piazza's shot is no good. Struggle for the loose ball. Piazza got it back, put it back up. No good, and I believe it's Chapman that's going to be called for the foul. Correction, that foul is on Shaw, not Chapman. I believe that's the sixth team foul on Haywood, and so for the last 226, after Piazza goes to the line and shoot these two, on every foul thereafter, Diamonds Bennett will shoot one and one. That's looking for his 20th point. He has 19 so far in the ball game. Delk leads all scores with 34 for Haywood County. Tyrone Hines has added 16 for the Tomcats. Piazza has 19, Corum 15. Ryan Black, 13, and Jamichael Mills with 10 for the Indians. Kingsport is 7 of 12 from the line as a team tonight. Make it 8 of 13. The Dobbins Bennett fans are chanting that they want Brainerd looking more and more like a rematch of a Earlier in the year tournament in which Dobbins Bennett fell to the Panthers from Chattanooga Brainerd for the final berth. Looks like it'll be Dobbins Bennett versus Brainerd. Delk working now against the double team. Gets it to Harwell who penetrates. Kicks it out to Chapman. Down to Shaw. The collapsing defense gets on him there and the ball gets away. Actually, Delk stole that ball from behind. And it was turned over by Cooper. Two minutes to go in the basketball game. 83-68, Dobbins Bennett leads. Mills missed the first shot, but got his own follow and put it up to make it 85-68. Good pass from Delk, now low to Shaw. Shot was partially blocked in there. Ricardo Hale runs it down and they set the offense once again. Double team, 
Dobbins Bennett asks for and gets a timeout with one minute, 20 seconds to go in the basketball game. They lead 85-68. Let's talk a little bit about Haywood County and the success they've had this year. They're to be, to be congratulated. 29 and 4, 29 and 5 after this game. They've really done a great job this year in getting here. You know, a lot of good teams never make it this far. They're one of the eight best teams in Class AAA. They've got an outstanding player in Tony Delk. And uh, I know a lot of times after losing a game like this, you feel down, but they've got everything in the world to be proud about. Obviously, Delk's a great player, but they've got many other fine players as well. And. Uh, Got some young players that play some on this team. And as we pointed out in the very outset, Haywood is a tradition-laden program. They come from a difficult area of the state to even uh, get out of and get here. And uh, you can expect to see them making some waves in West Tennessee in the future. On the other hand, you got Dobbins Bennett. They came in here ranked number one. There's a lot of pressure coming in as a top-ranked team. Uh, some teams can't handle that pressure. Sometimes that top ranking is untested and maybe even unwarranted, but it looks like in this case that Dobbins Bennett is a quality team with, uh, as you pointed out several times here, uh, good depth and good quality throughout the lineup. And they give you both. They give you good balance on both ends. They're both. They're strong offensively and defensively. It's not like like they have a one-dimensional game. They can score and they can shut you down from scoring. Major Bristol, number 34, a six-foot senior. He's coming into the game for Dobbins Bennett. Also number 44, a 5'9 junior, Corky Bly. He's got the ball now, wants to deal. Gets it back out top instead to Ryan Black. 58 seconds to go in the basketball game. Coming for a steal was Harwood. It wasn't there. Bristol from the baseline, good. 87-68. Here's Harwell back the other way. Whistle and there's going to be, I believe a block is going to be called on Bristol. Harwell hit the ground pretty hard. He's getting up slowly, but I think he's going to be okay. The Haywood trainer is coming to see about him now. Before they pick him up, they're going to check him out there just a minute. 45 seconds remain. We certainly hope that Harwell is not uh, seriously injured. May have been just shaken up by that fall. He's going off basically under his own power. A little bit shaky there. They're going to bring Dancy into the game, and he'll shoot the free throws for Harwell, who apparently is not able to do so. Tough position to come into for the young man. He hasn't had a chance to get warm and immediately goes to the free throw line. Second shot is up and good for Dancy. 87-69. Into the game for Dobbins Bennett. He's also come number 10, sophomore Ryan Wagner. He's a 5'7 point guard. 42.6 seconds remain. All that is left to be decided is the final margin of victory for Dobbins Bennett. <laughs> Looks like Wagner is going to be going to the line to shoot one and one. He'll get a chance to put his name in the books. His shot is long, no good. Bristol got the rebound. There's Bly for three. In and out, no good. Delk hustles for the rebound, gets it, but Wagner stepped on the sideline. 33.6 seconds to go. Haywood to work it in with Kendall Dancy. They get the ball to Delk. Delk working against the double team. And knocked out of bounds by Wagner. 23.9 seconds to go in the game. 87-69.
Delk with a follow, no good. Almost a spectacular follow by Delk that time. 13 seconds and Bristol dribbles it out of bounds. 12.1 seconds. Delk has it now, seven seconds. There's a long three launch, short. Hines from the baseline, one second. Delk at the buzzer, got it to go. He finishes with 36 points on the night, but the Dobbins Bennett Indians will advance to the final four of AAA basketball in the state of Tennessee. For Video Sports, I'm Steve Lusk along with Billy Ringo telling you that the final score of this basketball game, Kingsport Dobbins Bennett 87, Haywood County 71.